managing medications for someone who's living with dying at home can be one of the biggest barriers to someone staying at home because the family member suddenly, if they're not a healthcare professional, suddenly has to learn a whole new language um, and all sorts of new techniques that seems can seem overwhelming. But there are strategies and easy ways that we can help, hopefully, to, to make that more manageable for a family member caring for a loved one at home. So managing medications can be really stressful because there's this assumption sometimes of either over medicating or under medicating. So it's really important to reach out to all the resources that you have available, whether it's your family doctor, the nurse coming into the home, or even the pharmacist. The pharmacist is a great resource. So they know really about all the medications and low uh, detailed reports about the side effects, the symptoms that you may see. They can also provide you with pamphlets. If there is a lot of pills that are being taken, it can be quite overwhelming to know when to give them, what to give, what not to give. You can be worried about some interactions. So you can talk to your pharmacist about setting up a blister pack. That way you can just pop out the medication. It's set up by time and day and you don't really have to worry about that. A blister package is a perfect tool to help to simplify medication administration for family members. My rule of thumb is if you're on more than five medications, you should be using a blister package, no matter what your age or health diagnosis. So don't go home with a Ziploc bag full of 20 bottles. Uh, hand that back to the pharmacist. And sometimes you do need to ask and just say, I'd really like to have this in a blister package. It's a great tool because it's arranged by day and time. It's very uh, foolproof and you just have to pop out the, the pills on the right day and time and you know that everything that's been prescribed is in there and that it's safe, it's the right medication and the right dose, the right route for the right person. When you're dealing with pain and symptom management, we're really talking about the last few weeks of life. Mm -hmm. So often uh, your loved one will not be taking their regular medications for high blood pressure anymore or you know, their stool softener. They may not be swallowing those pills anymore and there's just not the need for them the way there once was. The focus of medications in palliative care is pain and symptom management. So even there's a lot of concern around over medicating, under medicating. The goal is comfort. The goal is quality of life. So when you're giving a medication, it's um, addressing a physical symptom. Let's use morphine as an example. You're giving someone morphine to manage their pain, mm -hmm. but if they don't have obvious pain, but they may seem agitated, they may seem like they're having trouble breathing, then morphine can also help to relax those smooth muscles and make breathing uh, easier. So medications at end of life sometimes have a different purpose than what, um, what we would use them for in a healthy person, so just something to keep in mind. There are a lot of misconceptions about narcotics and pain medications. People think that they're going to get addicted if they take them. It's very common. It's interesting, but it's a um, we have to think about the symptom management. When you're using a drug as a tool to manage a symptom with the goal end goal being comfort for the individual, that's really what what we're after when we're caring for someone at the end of life. Mm -hmm. So. I usually counsel patients uh, fa and family members that the, the goal of medication in palliative care is to help the physical body uh, be symptom free so that the spirit can rest. Many family members are concerned about over medicating a loved one so they hesitate to give medication um, until they actually see a symptom. So if you know, once they see someone grimacing or moaning in pain, then they'll give the medication. Um, but often with pain, once, it, once you start experiencing it, it's harder to get it under control. So it's best to give it on a regular schedule if this person is experiencing pain as a symptom on a, symptom on a regular basis so that it doesn't get out of control. Mm, you're not playing catch up with that pain. It's a lot harder to get it under control once you're already feeling, you know, on a scale of zero to ten. If you're already at a ten, bringing it back, it, it takes a bit of time uh, before you can get it to a controlled level. So there are a few key things to remember when you're administering medication for a family member. The first is that it's the right medication. So you always want to read the label of the medication that you're giving. So whether it's out of a pill bottle, out of a blister package, or out of an um, injectable ampule, 
um, you always want to know the medication that you're giving and that it's the correct one. You want to make sure it's the right person. Check the name on the label and make sure it's, you're giving it to the correct person because you can have multiple bottles in the home and you always just want to make sure you're not giving the wrong person the wrong medication. Mm -hmm. Certainly the right dose. So you want to know that it is the prescribed dose and you want to verify that against what the doctor has, has prescribed for your family member and just double checking that you're giving the right one. It may be half a tablet so if the, if the pharmacy hasn't cut it in half, make sure that you do. <laughs> and the right time is really important as well. Um, so you're not giving medication too early or too late. And that's an opportunity to make sure you have a log in the home so you can write down the time and the date of the medication that was given so nothing can get missed and you're not either playing catch up with the medication or you're not double dosing. Another thing to think about when administering medication is that it's given by the right route. So whether that's oral um, and the person is still able to swallow or by injection, um, that may be because it's faster and it's better absorbed or because they're no longer able to take pills by mouth. Um, and also you want to think about the right reason for giving the medication um, and what symptom it's addressing because that's really the goal in palliative care that we make sure that their physical body is comfortable. In the community, um, one thing that you'll often see is something called a, a symptom management kit. So the palliative care physician or the family doctor will write a prescription with all sorts of medications to address the symptoms that we commonly see at end of life. So that's something that your visiting nurse and family doctor can help to explain to you when those medications would be used. A very important tool to use is a log, when the last medication was given, what day, what time, so that anyone who comes in, any family member who may be also caring for your loved one, knows when the last medication was given. So it's very clear and there's no risk of, of um, giving a medication too soon or, or not soon enough. Mm -hmm.